strong and powerful. Go ahead. France, after having lost American and some European territory, expanded efforts into North Africa, Southeast Asia, and Oceania. You have to know that North Africa, across the top, east to west, is basically France until they bump into whom? To the British. And then there's even going to be a battle here uh, where they consider having a big fight, and then the French are like, whatever. We give up. We're not going to try to fight the British. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. Do you need to go stand up? Um, and then Southeast Asia. It's called Indochina. It's called Indochina. Did we talk about Thailand? Why is Thailand significant? This is one of my favorite things. Come with me, pigs. We are Thailand. Stand up. We are Thailand. Let's see. You guys are um, Indochina. So uh, Indochina, put it down if you don't know. Indochina equals Vietnam, Laos, L-A-O-S, and Cambodia. Indochina equals Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. And they are going to be controlled by the French from like the 1830s. You guys are Burma and South Asia. And we are Siam in between, which is today called Thailand. Here's what's going on. We have the French over there taking over, taking over, taking over. They have social Darwinism, meaning they have weapons. We have the British over here taking over, taking over, taking over. And so we're like, come on, we got, we got this, we got this. Look at, look at, look at. They're going to come for us, they're going to come for us. Come on, go, go, go. Come on, look, 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 watch our side, watch our side. What? That's what I thought. They're scared. They're scared. <laughs> what? What? That's what I'm talking about. We don't ever get taken over. Thailand. We got this. We got this. Have I know why we didn't get taken over? Is it because Mason and I are just oh, legit? Hell yeah, we are. What are you talking about? Look at him. Look at that guy. We are absolutely legit. legit. But also, France and Britain had decided what? To make a buffer state. What's that mean? Make sure you guys don't get into conflict with them, so we're going to leave what? Just leave some land in between that we're not taking over, and it turns out it's Thailand. So you know Thailand originally had to have been like, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Huh? That's what I thought. Back up. We got this. Britain and France had made agreement not to take them over so they would have a buffer state. EBD. Great EBD. That the, the world powers had decided to create a buffer state in Thailand that just simply kept the French and the British forces far away from each other with a buffer state which is Thailand. Go ahead. In 1894-1895, Japan expanded control in Korea and Formosa, which is Thailand, Taiwan today. As a result of the Sino-Japanese War, Korea and Formosa are going to be taken over. They're going to be taken over by the Japanese. 1894-95 is called the Sino-Japanese War. What's Sino mean? China. China. S-I-N, China, China, China. Go ahead. Cultural motives for imperialism. Racism, 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 racism. Scientific racism and social Darwinism. Why do the white people of the earth, the Europeans, America, why, and Japan, did I tell you that they were called the yellow peril? Right, they were called the yellow peril after they became very, very, very strong, which is of course a very racist thing anyway in the grand scheme of things. But all of the strongest, most powerful people were taking over and why could they take over? Clearly racial superiority. Clearly racial superiority. No, clearly technology. technology. But what do we say? It's because we are smart enough to come up with the best and the greatest technology. Go ahead. And then scientific ra racism. Phrenologists who studied skull sizes of chiefs believed Africans, Asians, and Native Americans had smaller skulls and were therefore mentally weaker. Guess who made that? European guy. Of course, he said that white people are, are better. Go ahead. Herbert Spencer, write that down. It's a good name to know. Herbert Spencer is the theory of social Darwinism. 
He's the one that said, okay, well, so if animals are the survival of the fittest, we too are the survival of the fittest. And we're far superior because our race is more intelligent. We are more capable because we have the moral compass and we have you know, a strong religion and all of these things about why white people took over. Uh, he used Darwin's theory of evolution to explain differences between one group of people and other groups of people and or different societies. Even societies were inferior. Uh, survival of the fittest, social Darwinism is 1864. Even though most of you guys think that survival of the fittest is Darwin, it's actually Herbert Spencer that came up with those words. Social Darwinism. Go ahead. Social Darwinists saw gaps between rich and poor. The imperialized nations falling to imperial powers were, was natural and manifest, obvious, survival of the fittest, that when a weaker nation falls to us, it's because we are superior to them, when in reality, what? It's because we just had the biggest guns. But we said we had the biggest guns because we had the biggest brains to create the better, greater technology. Go ahead. Um, scientific racism was outlined by this guy in 1885 on his essay of the inequality of the human races. He divided humanity into four basic races. It is so racist. Go ahead. Oh, go back. Like all of these things, go back. The yellow race. Oh, it's awful. All of these things that he's saying about black folks, about black people, Chinese people. Unbelievable. Go ahead. Gobineau, Ar Gobineau argued that differences exi exist among human races and that the darker races are naturally inferior to whites. All of the world goes with this premise. This is just the 19th century. This is 1864. 1864, that's like 150, 160 years ago that we have this idea. Where is it going to hit its height? This superiority of the races. When's it going to hit the height? Nazis. Nazis, the Aryan race, and the Japanese consider themselves the master race. It's going to play out the most when we get to World War II with this Nazi Aryan ideology. Go ahead. The imperative for superior Europeans to civilize the inferior parts of the world was often referred to as the white man's burden. Uh, by Rudyard Kipling. How many of you had um, the, you read the book when you were a little kid, Ricky Tiki Tavi? The Jungle Book? The Jungle Book? Or the TV cartoon or cartoon? Yeah, the right, the Jungle Book? That's Rudyard Kipling. There's also another story called Ricky Tiki Tavi that I guess some of us read when, it was a mongoose when we were younger. Um, Rudyard Kipling comes up with the white man's burden, like, <sighs> all right. I don't want to go to India and civilize those people, but okay, I will. It's a burden, but okay, I'll go in there and civilize them. And for my troubles, I'll rape, rob, and pillage the continent. Same with Africa. All right, well, I don't really want to, but I guess I will. The white man's burden. It's the burden to go civilize. Take up the white man's burden. Send forth the best ye breed. Go bind your sons, British, to exile to serve your captives' needs, to wait in heavy harness on fluttered folk and wild, your new-caught sullen peoples, half-devil and half-child. Who are they referring to as half-devil and half-child? Everybody that's what? No, not, white. not white. Scientific racism. The white man's burden, put it down, put it down, put it down. White man's burden, social Darwinism, scientific racism, all of those things could be used in the first half of the 20th century if we're talking about world wars. Because it is the ideology of what? Racial superiority. The ideas of racial superiority. The British are having a burden of having to go civilize the half devil, half child, the people of the darker races across the earth. They don't want to do it, but all right, go ahead. Missionaries believed Europeans had the duty to undertake a civilized, uh, civilizing mission to bring Christianity and technology to less fortunate people. Um, my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Epperson, was very, 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 very focused on being a missionary. 
And she went to Africa almost every summer that she was a teacher. When we went to visit her, she was a fifth grade teacher. And then later when we were in high school, we went to visit her because everybody knew exactly where she lived. And her whole house was decorated with tusks <laughs> and African masks and everything from Africa because she had been a missionary in Africa as a teacher every summer she would go to be a missionary in Africa. Um, missionaries are just the first step in this civilizing mission. The next step were the guns. The first step were the missionaries. Go ahead. Economic motives for imperialism. You guys, I don't even need to say this, yes? What's the economic motive for imperialism? Well, there's money. That's, that's economics. But what's, what are we trying Raw to do? Materials. Raw materials. We're going into rape, rob, and pillage the natural resources of all of these places. Go ahead. Despite the political and cultural motivations for imperialism, economic motives are the most significant. Money, 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 money. Uh, did we talk about that? Greed equals power. Power equals greed. Did we talk about that? Power is money. Money is power. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. Right? That everybody wants money, 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 and then money makes you very powerful. Industrial countries need the raw materials and natural resources required for new markets to meet the demands of mass production. I've said it before, but I can't focus and say it enough. What about industrialization in these other countries? No, 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 no. No factories, no industrialization. We go to take the raw materials. We even make people there dig up the raw materials and then what? Ship them out. How do we ship them out? Steam trains and steam boats. Where do the boats go? Up the rivers, up and dark into the heart of darkness, into the interior of Africa. And as, as she said, this book, The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad is a great book. Did you like it or no? I liked it, but I don't, well, we also read another book called Things Fall Apart Afterwards. Oh yeah, it's good too. More interesting perspectives he saw from the actual natives rather than the colonizers. Yeah, yeah, that was a great book too. That was a great book too. Um, so The Heart of Darkness, you just feel like you're going back in time because nobody has been in the interior. Um, the same thing happened to me in Georgia once. I was in Georgia with some friends. We had gone there to go whitewater rafting in North Georgia. Um, it's probably around, oh, I was moving to Florida. I mean, I was moving back to Ohio. So it was, eight, it was 1998 and we had all gone whitewater rafting. I went walking to the lake that was there, and when we went to the lake, there's no train tracks, there's no telephone lines, no telephone poles. When I went to the edge of the lake in North Georgia, I remembered this book, The Heart of Darkness, and I thought, oh my God, this is what the natives would have seen. Because I was sitting in the lake, by the edge of the lake, and I saw only what? Nature, 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 nature. So like any rational person, I took all my clothes off and I skinny dipped and swam across the lake. It's rational, right? Is that rational? Yeah. Then I got to the other side and I was like, my friends are idiots. Oh my God, Renee, get back, get back, get back, get back. What was I afraid of? What did I realize when I was on the other side at an island? Oh my God, they're gonna take my clothes. Somebody's gonna walk out here like this 15 minute walk and take my clothes and I'd have to run back without any clothes. How many of you have friends like this? They would have taken your clothes, right? Anyway, they didn't. I got back and it was fine. So that whole just native, beautiful, untouched, 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 that goes away in the 19th century. We go into every possible place possible and rape, rob, and pillage the natural resources. And we make the native populations be the ones that have to dig these all up and send these all out. Overpopulation parts of Europe motivating imperialist expansion to create opportunities for Europeans elsewhere. Britain has been around since Rome. How big is Britain? Can you touch Britain, please? It has been around since Rome. What's the problem? Are you at, you? I'm kind of stupid. I'm like really stupid. <laughs> Avery, Anna, Britain. Paula, can you walk up and touch Britain, please? Did you not do your Europe map yet? No, I did yesterday. You don't remember where Britain is from yesterday? There it is. Oh, okay. So Britain is a very small island, and they have a bigger and bigger population. Now they're industrializing. What do they not even have room for anymore? 
even farming, even growing food. They even need foodstuffs from other places. Go ahead. Private companies like the British East India Company and the Dutch East India Company developed wealth and power that could rival many states. Uh, how many people know that's the same right now about Walmart or Bezos or Amazon or whatever else? Most major companies in the United States of America and across the world have a bigger GDP, gross domestic product, than most nations. Most nations could only dream of the wealth that Bezos has or Zuckerberg or any of them. Go ahead. Who's hitting? Dalton, did you hit him? Not in yet. So Rebecca, I didn't get him back. We have a little social darmies going on back in the back right there. I have a rubber band to defend myself. Do you want my club? Yeah. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again, Dalton. Do it again. Do it again. That's what I thought. You got that. Give me my club back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, uh. state expansion from 1750 to 1900. Go ahead. What does the word state mean? Is it time? Uh, no, but how long is the video been going? Oh. 44 minutes. <gasps> Paige.